How important is it to remain mentally balanced with everything coming at you from movies to working out, all the demands, movies, working out, um, going to estheticians, to all these people, and they asking you so many things and they pulling you in every direction from agents to you know everything and you're constantly prodded on being not perfect enough you need to lose weight you need to do this and you got to keep your mentality strong in the midst of it all when i started modeling i i called it the never good enough job people are like oh what do you do for a living i'm like oh i'm in the never good enough job because <laughs> you are never good enough like someone's finding something wrong and that sucks and it hurts your self-esteem but you learn to sort of understand like it doesn't matter like you're still beautiful it's just they're looking for something else that doesn't mean that you, your value or worth has gone down i actually had kind of like a breakdown like two and a half years ago and i left my career at a high point I had finished, I think I had just finished like five films or four films and I had told my management, I'm like, you know, I really just want to go away. Like, I need to take a break. Like, it's really too much. I haven't seen my friends or my family and and I feel like my soul is getting sucked out and I'm not happy. Like, I was depressed and just like, I was sick also. Um, so much stress, my hair was falling out. Like, oh my God, it was a disaster. And I kept pushing through it, saying, no, 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 I gotta keep, you know, you start thinking, oh, I gotta keep up with the- you Start believing. It? Yeah, like I gotta keep up. If I leave, they're gonna forget about me and I'm not gonna have this. And other people start talking in the ear, like, oh, you better, you better not leave because then this girl's gonna get that job or then you're gonna miss out or they're gonna forget you. And that plays on your fears. But then one day, I'll never forget it. I just like got into a hotel room, a beautiful palace hotel. I was doing promotions for a film. I got in. I mean, it was gorgeous. I mean, my life on the outside looked amazing. Fancy hotels, fancy cars, beautiful things, always looking good because people are doing my hair and makeup in the limelight, in the newspaper, on TV. I sat down, I had this half a sandwich that was in my bag. I pulled it out, I started eating it on the floor and I started crying. Mm. Like crying. I was crying. Like I'm talking about sobbing. <laughs> That's heavy because you, you did that at a height. It's like, dang, I'm looking at everything going on, you know? Yeah, it was, it was like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh my God, what is going on? What am I doing with myself? Where, like, where's my life going? Mm -hmm. Emotional. It's a deep question because that's, that's all the, those are the finding moments that really make us or break us essentially. Because it's some people you endured it, you got away, but it's some people that would have turned to drugs. You got some people that turn to, you know, unfortunately suicide. Yeah. You got so, and then those thoughts run through all of our minds during these points. That's true. So I think, it, I can't remember who said it. Um, I think it might've been uh, on Oprah or something. And it was like, you can never be surprised by what somebody does in their thought process because you possess it all too. Yes. And I've, I've experienced that. Uh, I wasn't into drugs or alcohol, but definitely the depression and suicide thoughts would sneak in. And that, it's just so weird. Like, how did they even sneak in there? You know what I mean? Like, it just gets you. And then if it keeps going, that's when it spirals downward. Yeah, I had to make a really big decision. It was huge. It was scary because it's the first time in my life not that I loved the fame, the fame is very awkward for me, but I loved that I was being creative and that I was making so much money to take care of my family. Because I think I had this like fear, like I had security issues, like financial security issues growing up my whole life. So now that I'm actually making this money, you don't want to lose it. And like, what am I giving up for money? Like my soul, my everything, like my friends getting married, I'm missing all the weddings, uh, every people's kids are growing up and I'm missing like the monumental moments. Like my mom's getting older, I didn't see her for years. Like mm. so many things that really matter were passing me by. Mm. And, I, and that kid, like after so many years, I think it was about, well, maybe like six years or seven years, six, seven years there that I finally was like having that breakdown. And you know what I did? It was like, I don't know what time it was. It had to be like 9 p.m. at night or something like that. I'm crying, I'm on the floor. I got up, 
I got a cab. I went to the airport. I didn't tell anybody. I booked a ticket. I flew back to where I was living in India. I packed my bags. I got my ticket for America. And then the next day I left. Mm. So now they all like, what, what happened? <laughs> and, and, like, and people were very upset. They're like, oh, what's she doing? But I was like, I can't. I was like, I can't, I don't care. I don't care what happens. I don't care what these people think. I don't care about the money. I don't care about nothing. I'm going home to my mama. <laughs> and I went home to my mama.